36 minutes, okay. <laughs> See how that goes. It'll record our voices. Yeah? Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. So, yes. so this is the dog. the dog. Yeah. Or the pet. Yeah. Okay, but it also represents freedom and frivolity and a lack of consciousness. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, then there is this woman, and I went to Scotland and I found a wreck of a boat, hmm. and I've decided that now she lives on the seaside and she's Lovely. a beachcomber and she collects oh. things from the beach, but at the same time, her body's decaying and falling apart. Mm -hmm. So, you know how she had a spoon for an arm? Yes. Now I want her to have a real arm mm -hmm. that can fall off, which right. she replaces with a spoon that she finds on the beach. Yep, that's good. And this is going to look, I'm going to age it, and I'm going to make it all look like driftwood. So, at some point she lost her legs and she's replaced them ah, with good. wheels. Yes, right. Um, and I made this head. Yep. And wow. this is kind of like the realism I'm going to go for in the head, although it's not very real. It's a bit weird looking, but I forgot to give her ears and a place for a rod, and so it's not going to be this head. Mm. Right. Yeah. And... Oh, what? It's beautiful. <laughs> and I got this off a tree in oh, Scotland, lovely. so she's going to have like <sighs> hair that she found on the beach as Excellent. well. Excellent. Yeah. And this is her hand. This is super sculpty. So this is new material to yes. cook in the oven and it's brilliant yeah. but I haven't painted it or anything but it right. really doesn't need it. Um, the colour is gorgeous. It is, isn't it? it? And the, the teeth are, are, are like teeth. acrylic fake teeth. Yeah, so, yeah. Really, I love the colouring on them, it's really really good. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to remake her head and I'm going to make yes. it better. Right. Um, so the design's kind of altered a little bit because last time we yes. talked we were talking about her bending over and stuff. Yes. But now I want it to look like she once had legs and now yes. she hasn't got legs. So I want her to be... Show the camera. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> I want her to be like, she's got stumps but is on wheels, if that makes sense. Or as in the past we were talking about her bending over. Yes, right. And I think here, I don't know how, but maybe it's like a ball or something she's yes. sat on. So she can move in every direction, but it's kind of... Yes clothed so you can't see the balls or yeah, maybe right. it's a ball and I don't know yeah so you could actually do, you, do it as a ball so she could go. bend yes. forward and bend back right. but she's got right. that kind of like freedom you would have if you just had your hips right so uh, in terms of how the string in the puppetry works is that ball joint loose enough that if you were to let go she would actually just fall over yeah yes yeah. so you're keeping her upright yeah by, so we can actually make sure it's quite a loose joint on yeah. That. yeah yeah That's yeah 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 um, so then this is inside her, but this is all that's going to be, like, sorry, I think this is how it is at the moment. So she'll exist in this world, and at some point her arms will fall off and she'll replace them, and then at some point her jaw's going to drop off. Right. And then her head's going to fall off, and then this is going to kind of climb out of her. Right. Like it's her soul, and really? then it's going to run off and they're going to just, like, run into the sea. Oh. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> uh, right. The do you want these bits to drop off? Um, these bits can drop off throughout the show. Yeah. Yes. And there are lots of ways of doing that. Yeah. And one of the really, really interesting ways of doing it is using uh, electromagnets. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. With electromagnets, if it was held there by an electromagnet yes. and I had a rod here, yes. would I be able to move her arm around? Oh, would there yes, be an yeah, element yes. of mobility oh, yes, and yes. then it would just go? Yes. So then it could fall off when I'm not touching it? Yes. That's how I want it's it. It's about getting the power right on that, but you can actually, there are lots of ways of doing that. You can still have an electromagnetic joint that is actually um, on, a, on a swivel. So it swivels freely and it's got a really solid connection. Mm. So it only releases when you want it to release, which mm. is actually quite important. Mm. So And would that uh, be like remote control power? Yes, so I could have, say it's now, so yes. it's not like a tiny So you thing. could actually have it on your main stick and you yeah. can have the switches on that stick. Yeah. So the only thing is that the power for those, they're quite power consuming. Yeah, okay. And there's a, it depends on the weight. Um, there, but there are other ways of doing it. For example, if you were to take a, um, 
uh, a magnet and a um, so that's say for example uh, yeah if that's in the arm yeah and search your magnet there yeah. and if you have a metal plate that is movable then when you've got the plate close to the magnet it stays where it should but if you then pull this away this will drop off right and that could be quite a good way of doing and that it. So there's no any electric, electric. Exactly, yeah. that's right. So you don't have the what issue of What kind of power would you be looking at? Like what size battery what, to, to actually make that to, something like that work? Uh, the, the battery would probably fit nicely inside here, but it may require something like um, a 12 volt lead acid type battery. Yeah, just they're to do quite that. thick. I've but used them in the past. Yeah, they, yeah, you can get them quite small nowadays. Right. Um, or you could use a lithium battery. Yeah, yeah, this is it. So, a slightly more uh, mechanical solution is to use a distance of a magnet in a metal plate. Yeah. And so you either control the magnet or you control the plate, one or the other, because it may matter. Mm. Um, The electromagnets have got a huge amount of power to them, so they they don't let go unless they initially ready to let them go. Yeah. So this mechanism is not quite as uh, and secure, but it's still workable. Yeah. And it's amazing, it doesn't take much distance to, to actually all of a sudden lose your magnetism. Yeah. So, and that's quite common in cabinet making when they're using magnetic joints uh, and magnetic catches. Yeah. And it takes a lot of skill to get them to work properly. What you're doing is you're actually making them fail. Yes, yeah, so, really that's good. Really so it's actually quite easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I think what we could do is have some mechanism that comes mm. up either through the head and through there that when you, it's on a spring mechanism, so that when you pull it, it actually pulls either the magnet or the plate away and the arm just drops off. Mm. And so you can have triggers on, you know, a, a few triggers on this, mm. like pulley triggers, mm. um, that allow us to drop bits off. Yeah, and I'm just thinking because the neck, I really want it to be like this and really loose, so if I wasn't holding it, the head would fall like that as well, so I have yeah. real like control over it. Right. So those pulleys and things would have to be string or...? Yes, but that's all doable. Because they're all on spring release, yeah. then uh, you've got the tension already there to actually make it work normally, but then when you pull the spring, yeah. so it could be a loose bit of string, but when yeah, you pull yeah. that yeah. and you pull the mechanism away, then it will drop off. Yeah, Once it's gone, yeah. it's, uh, it's that's it permanent. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that to like tie in with yeah. uh, what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Excellent. So how many of those mechanisms were you looking at in terms of? Because you've got well, your arm is one of them. Yes. I'd li- ideally I'd like one arm to fall off and then and then to be able to replace it with a spoon. Right. And now then the other the arm. Fall off. Tell me, tell me what your intention is with the spoon and how does. What does she do to get her arm? Because oh, would she be leaning over to something to pick up a spoon? Wouldn't she just do it with her other arm? Oh, yes, yeah, she could do that, yeah. Sorry. Unless both arms had already fallen <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. Of course, she would use that arm. I, w- I think I want it that, like, she can't really bend over, and right. if she does, she falls, yeah. and maybe that will happen at some point. Right. But I quite she could actually do like that and actually fall on a spoon. And then she gets another arm. Just yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she just happens to be going by and she falls She's over. not collecting that, the things at all. That, they that, just kind they of just like appear her, and yeah. There. yeah. So, which would mean that the, it would be good if the uh, magnet, if the magnet assembly is in the arm. Yeah. Uh, so rather than, so the, the metal is actually just a part of the arm, but the magnet's yeah. actually in the, in the body yeah. and the torso. So that when she falls over, it's going to pick up whatever it sort of like mm. sees, yes? Mm. So, and if she falls over into a into a, an area where there's a yeah. spoon, um, she will actually naturally pick that up. These magnets actually have to be quite strong to do that. It's, um, it's quite weird. Uh, yeah. They, uh, you need to do a little bit of experimenting to see what distance you need to actually pick an object up yeah. so you can determine the magnet based on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah? So I'd suggest that we we go for something, we do a bit of experimentation uh, and we get the right magnet and we actually embed that into the arm structure. Yeah. Does it matter if you actually see that 
magnet? Um, or do you rather it's I'm disguised? I'm visualising that it's all dressed. Right. So it would jacket, just be a bit of cloth then, then. Yeah, but then if she's got a jacket on and her arm falls off, it wouldn't all fall off because the jacket would hold her arm on. So right, I unless really it's the same material of which uh, yeah. you've got the separation. Material's not a, a problem because it's actually very thin, mm. but it's amazing how quickly used magnetism yeah. in a short distance. Yeah, yeah. So if we use something too solid, like for example, if we had the main torso and it's actually like a wood veneer or something, right. you know, it's amazing how much you would lose in terms of magnetism. But if it's mm. any material, that may not be a problem because mm. it's so thin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a bit of experimenting needs to go mm. on there just to find out, you know, um, it's a, it is a lot more power of that magnet. Yeah. And then you've got the issue of how much distance do you need to move it by in order to get it to something to drop off. Mm -hmm. yeah? But that depends on the weight of the object in the first place. Mm -hmm. So you've got a number of issues here that you need to construct the arm and have the spoon in order to know what type of magnet you need yeah. in order to get the best performance. I need to find a spoon and I've got this spoon in my head. Mm, I know. And I can't find <laughs> the spoon. And you can't find the spoon, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. That's my mission for the Easter holidays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, this ball mechanism because we have the platform here and we can work yeah. on that, which is great. Uh, so, how do you want to build this up from here up to the next level? How I kind of visualise it is that there's a concave dip here. Yes. And then. I build her upper body as a completely separate bit. Yes. And then I literally dress it in fabric, and that's mm. what joins the two things. So it's right. really malleable. How right. I do it. So is the material of this actually making the bond between? Yeah. So the, the difficulty there is that if you were to do that, imagine stretching that material across to hold the whole object down, but you need give in every direction. So the material has to be baggy, yeah. because otherwise it can't move. Yeah. And as soon as it's baggy, if you lift it, the ball then just sits. Yeah. So you've got so this up and down good. motion, so that's not actually really going to work too well. Yeah? No. So um, is there maybe the possibility of having a very weak spring in there? So you have the centre of the spring there, yeah. and then you've got a platform of which there's the other bits, yes? Yeah. And then the spring, Oh, that would allows. work really well, yeah, yes. yeah. So, and there, there are lots of different types of springs. And that can could just be visible as well. Well, well, yeah, well, yeah. well, yes, why not? Yeah, that would be yeah, really, yeah. really good, yeah. So you could use a really bouncy spring mm -hmm. um, that's got enough sort of like rigidity. It's probably better if it's, it's longer um, rather than wide because it's, it's about trying to get that slight springiness, mm. yes? So if it's too wide, it's sort of like almost like too solid. Mm. But if it's quite narrow, it's got that balance between, it's got to be a compression spring. So, uh, so it's coming down in that direction. But it almost requires you to be able to hold it up in order for it to stay up. Mm. Otherwise, mm. it will actually mm. just sort of like want to yeah, lean yeah. over, yeah? Okay. That sound I don't know where to begin. Yeah. Right. There, there are all begin, sorts of uh, like there are all sorts of springs um, that you can buy and get that, that, that different properties. Um, I can make some contacts uh, with that, and I'll send you some links. Okay. Okay. And then what I suggest you do? These people are really, really helpful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, call the company. Yeah. Explain who you are and what you're doing. Yeah. And believe me. I'll bend over backwards. Really? Because they love a challenge. Okay. okay. So, and then we want to give you loads of samples, all free. Oh, wow. To, okay. To do. Yeah. Uh, if you want me to approach them, I will, but I think you will do really well by doing it yourself. Okay. Because I think you've just got the, you, you, you've got the passion and yeah. you know, the, the, the knowledge of what you're trying to yeah, do. If you need yeah. some guidance on that, we can talk about it beforehand. Yeah. Um, but I would say I'll make some contacts with some streaming companies and then maybe actually call someone and say, look, uh, Rebecca's calling you. Can yeah. you discuss it with her? Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, yeah. so um, uh, streaming uh, contacts. Uh, uh, so I know what we're looking for on that spring contact. So I'll do some research on that for you and then send you the links uh, mm -hmm. associated with that. So. 
from that, uh, we've then got this springy body here. Yeah. And uh, so we could actually, if we get the spring, we can actually put a, when we do this drawing again, mm -hmm. we can actually put a hole in the centre here to actually embed that in, yeah, to actually yeah, hold yeah. it down. So it's actually quite honestly, yes? Yeah. So let's move up the body a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so what do you see here? Because that's a really flat as it, as that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that, this kind of needs to sit inside something mm. because this eventually will leave the body. Right. So is it going to leave by it being tilted over far enough for it to fall out? No, it's, she's going to lose all her limbs and fall over and right. die fundamentally. Yeah. And then I am just going to manipulate this out of her body. Right, and how hands. are you going to get... Oh, so you're, so you're saying you're physically... Yeah, I'm hands. literally going to pick it up. Oh, right, okay. Take it out. Yes. Right, yeah. Yeah. So... And the audience will just go with me on that one. Right, no, it's like, <laughs> is that, are you doing that because that's what you want to do, or are you doing that because that's the technical way to actually overcome the problem? Um, I could probably... I want to do it that way. Right. Because... One of my fears of um, having lots of contraptions and yes. things is that I'm going to lose the hands-on quality and like the life that comes from doing something hands-on. Yes. Because um, I've been looking at animatronics a lot and stuff, and I find they're good, but they just don't they don't seem lifelike to no, me right. because they don't have organic movement. Yes. So. I want to take it out of the body, yeah, so yeah, it looks like it has a life of its own. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I kind of see it that it just sits inside like a little box or case or something yeah. that forms the structure of her upper torso. Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so given that this is a cavity um, and the head is part of that, how does the head fit onto that whole structure and how is the head held in I place. See, I see. <laughs> this is when my <laughs> my bad engineering comes in. Yeah. So I see it that there's just like a rod that goes across like this. Yeah. And then that's a bit of wire that goes around like that and it just sits. Oh, and right, it, okay. so yeah. if you let go it would just right. go <laughs> Right, okay, that's fine. Um, so in order to get that bit of wire there we've got to have some other structure. But that yeah. ties in with these arms anyway. Yeah. Because we have to have this this uh, magnetic release type mechanism, don't we? Yeah. So we could almost have something that is a bit like um, and uh, let's see. That's the So you have this sort of like shoulder structure. Oh, that could structures. be potentially really simple, couldn't yes. it? Yes, so yeah. there's your platform that the, the heart sits on. Yeah. Yeah. So, just, uh, so we have to use the light base, but yeah, there's the, the wheels, the light base. But this, all yes. of this would be on the spring, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, sorry, yes, of course, yeah. you've got the springy bit, haven't you? So, uh, so in fact, that stops there, yes? Yeah. So get rid of that bit. And so then you've got the coily spring yeah. down the bottom, and that actually disappears. Yeah. That better? Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to redraw that. Yeah. And that's good because that gives us rigidity um, to be able to have magnetic releases. Does she lose both arms at this point? Uh, she'll lose both arms. So we want the I'm same mechanism. Yeah. Work. So that actually, this could work out really well because. If we put a chamber across here, like that, yes? Yeah. And that allows us to create the spring mechanism that's actually quite yeah, rigid yeah. inside that chamber. Yeah. So that when you pull on a string or something, it pulls either one or both or whatever. So you've got two yeah. different cam mechanisms. But that chamber there will allow us to actually do that. Yeah. So that works out quite well. Good. <laughs>
Yeah, that's great. And then it's that crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Yeah. It's interesting you draw a spring as big as you did because that, that's another interesting possibility. Oh, I'm just Is imagining that, it. Well, no, 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 because that actually has certain properties. If, it, if the wire on that is actually, it's got to have the strength to support that structure yeah. without compressing too much. But also it needs the freedom to actually move. And it's interesting you've drawn it like you have because it, this is where the experimentation comes in. And this is why it'd be good to talk to a spring manufacturer because you can get springs made with different wire right. and different thicknesses that have different supportive properties. And so those are the things that we would actually bother. So a very loosely bound spring would actually give the best effect. Yeah. And it may be necessary to have it on quite a large scale okay. um, rather than actually small. It just depends on, yeah, there's all sorts of motion things here that are going on. Mm. Um, so I think once again, the experimentation with the uh, magnetic release and this experimentation with the coil mm. spring area. Yeah? I'm really excited. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, right. Okay. So, um, so we've got the platform, we've got the spring, we've got the torso, we've got the mechanism that you're pulling out by hand, we've mm. got the magnetic release and we've got the head attachment. Mm -hmm. So there's one more element. Yes, go on. The jaw. Ah, yes. Ideally, yes. I want her to be able to talk. Okay. Right. In the past, when I've made puppets with moving jaws, mm. I've just used a peg inside. All right. So yes, the yes. natural springs. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. And, and the peg just comes out the back of the head, and you go like that, and it opens and shuts. Yes. But it's a really cack-handed way of doing it, and it never really works very well. Right. And the pegs break, and right. all kinds of things. Um, and ideally, I'd like it that her jaw could just drop off. Right. Um, <laughs> you see, now this is where animatronics does come in. Yeah. Because you could, I've just been doing work on stepper motors for Eureka. And right. And it is possible to do voice analysis with, to a processor that then actually moves it up and down to your voice so that when you talk like this, the certain words can be used. Really? Yeah. So it could actually go, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could it just go, oh? Yes, because you allow it to do that in part of the electronics. Oh my God. So That's such a scary world, but maybe that's what I need to do. Well, it's, uh, it's possible because once again, you could still use um, a magnetic cam type arrangement so that when you pull a bit of string, you lose the magnetic contact and it just drops off. Mm. But prior to that, it's actually still attached mm. and it's the cam is the bit that's moving up and down. Mm. And so, and because it's just a, a magnetic and a metal environment, as soon as you've got the distance, it'll just drop away because mm. it's got no, no, no connection. So there are a number of ways of actually looking at this. When you say you're using the peg and it's bit cap handed, are there, what would be the traditional puppeting ways of actually maybe addressing that? Uh, well, I think they just use pegs, oh, that's or right, like not necessarily right. pegs, but a whole like peg yeah. mechanism. Right. As far as I know. And it's just spring, so mm. that you just go mm. like that. How does it interfere with you as a puppeteer to have to do that and do all the other things that you're doing? It, is this well, it, you do it with the hand that's on the head. So. Right. So, and do you have a mechanism on there that actually? Yeah. Right.